Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. The first one for November. Happy November to you. It is November 1st, 2018, and let's take a look at what's going on in the tropics. Nothing right now in the Atlantic. Oscar has transitioned into a powerful mid-latitude cyclone moving out over the North Atlantic, so there's nothing for the National Hurricane Center to track at the moment. But you can keep track of what's happening with the remnants, or what is now extratropical storm, powerful ocean storm Oscar, uh, using the high seas forecast and other ocean service tools, especially if you have interests in the shipping lanes up here in the North Atlantic. That is out of my realm of uh, knowledge base, honestly. So I think those that are in the maritime business probably know exactly what to look for. Now, in the Eastern Pacific, look at this. Things have changed a little bit. We are back to three X's. You remember a couple of days ago we had three yellows. Now we have two yellows and a red. So what's what? Well, this first one, not going to really do anything, it looks like, so no problem there. The middle one mm, might try to develop 40% chance, but then the uh, farther east one, the farthest east, uh, is up to 90% chance of development. And so it looks like we're going to have another named storm for the Pacific Basin here, the East Pacific, uh, in the month of November. So that being said, let's take a look at something real quick, and that would be the tropical cyclone names for the Eastern North Pacific. Here's 2018. We have used Willa, so the next one will be Xavier. All right, so there's only three left, Xavier, Yolanda, and Zeke and then it's all used up. I don't think that will happen, but we're going to get to the X one, Xavier. How about that? Pretty interesting little piece of trivia for you. Um, they have more names on the list in the Eastern Pacific because there are more names to choose from representative of that basin, I guess, is the better way to explain it, or the best way. Uh, the Atlantic Basin, we only have 21 names on the list. Um, Q, U, X, Y, and Z are omitted. Just a little more trivia for you. So this is going to go on to become Xavier, it looks like, and we can see that on the Tropical Tidbits animation here. Uh, this is the area of general interest, and then this looks like it's going to try to congeal and come together and become a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane at some point, despite the strong upper-level winds to the north of it. Uh, it's going to try to develop in this one small sweet spot over still quite warm water. The southeastern Pacific, the water temperatures are warm enough, and there you go. So it's going to continue. Look at this, too. Big squall line worked its way into the Gulf of Mexico, the oil interest out there monitoring that, I am sure. That same squall line brought a lot of heavy weather over to parts of Louisiana and Texas last night, making trick-or-treating interesting, to say the least, for some folks. Very heavy rain in the Houston area and vicinity that has moved across this sort of second spring, if you will. Um, you have the springtime outbreaks of severe weather, and then October, November, you can sort of have your second springtime outbreak, except that it's fall. And it's very similar. You have cold air and jet stream energy that dives down out of Canada, meeting up with what's already a very warm Atlantic and Gulf pattern in terms of water temperatures and that evaporates moisture into the atmosphere. Moisture equals energy, and you get these battle zones that develop in the transitional period here from fall into winter. So uh, here we go, a pretty active pattern, and this will be moving on to the east with time, spreading the possibility of heavy rain, severe weather, etc., through the rest of the southeast. A lot of it has moved through into the panhandle today, affecting areas where Michael went through, and I even saw that mentioned in the area forecast discussion uh, from National Weather Service Tallahassee. You know, basically pointing out that, hey, look, the folks down there in the recovery mode, especially people living in tents, isn't that unbelievable? And to me, it's unacceptable, uh, but that's a story for another day, that we have people living in tents uh, after this hurricane has passed through. Um, I mean, we could talk all about you know, the humanitarian role of how we treat people in this country, but that's for a, probably an entirely different channel. It is, however, a problem when you get these severe weather outbreaks 
We saw that, you know, after the hurricanes of 04, 05. Uh, but this just seems to be a little bit slower going down here, and I'm not happy about it. There's not much that I can do personally. You know, had I won that $1.6 billion, I certainly would have done something. But bringing awareness to it, I think, is a good idea. And that's what the Weather Service was doing, pointing out, look, this squall line is going to come through uh, and potentially bring some problems to people in temporary tents, etc., the tarps, you know, trees that are still you know, on the verge of falling, uh, power lines that are weakened, etc. It was just kind of weird to see that. Uh, what else? Looking down here in the deep tropics, of course, really nothing to worry about in a tropical convergent zone nice and squashed to the south so trinidad tobago barbados grenada and all the islands north and north northwest from there they do arc in a pattern there all the way up to the u.s british virgin islands puerto rico yeah maybe some pop-up showers in the afternoon but that's about it nothing to worry about from the tropics anymore in 2018 i'm quite confident of that so let's look at the modeling here for the uh, the Pacific, the GFS here, the 12Z run, uh, California, the Baja Peninsula, west coast of Mexico, and this is a five-day animation. I'm just going to outline and then leave this up, and then I'll use the yellow to highlight what's going on here. And it starts over. There's the energy, the vorticity. Two systems, Joe Bastardi says, often it's like two pigs fighting in a feed sack. I personally have never seen that, but I guess it does exist, and they both suffer because neither one of them can have all of the feed, and in this case, these two vorticity systems or centers of these tropical systems fighting against each other, uh, and then who knows, maybe one will weaken faster and we have a stronger storm or a hurricane. Bottom line is this will be something to monitor over the next several days, and so you folks here along the coast of Mexico could be some heavy rain, maybe some wind, maybe a hurricane threat. This is going to be a tough one because there are two systems fighting like pigs in a feed sack. So we'll see what happens with this over time. And it's November. We typically do not see development in November in the Southeast Pacific. It's not unprecedented, but it's not typical either. So a little bit unusual. Again, relating to the storms that I was talking about moving through the Southeast, Pretty healthy front, and that's moving through Georgia. I bet Atlanta is a lot of fun right now. Said no one ever, <laughs> that old phrase. Yuck, nasty squall line and heavy rain right through the Atlanta metro area near rush hour, too. You know, after about 3.30, 4 o'clock, schools let out, etc. you know, probably after 2, 2.30. Ugh, just forget that. At least it's not one inch of snow, right? Uh, but, yeah, this pass through, now going through the Apalachicola area, Port St. Joe uh, after going through Mexico Beach and Panama City. Um, hopefully it wasn't too unpleasant. But again, the fresh water, I, I cannot emphasize enough, after some of these disasters, um, the rainfall is a cleansing mechanism. And as long as it's not too heavy and a prolonged event, uh, it really can kind of help with the whole recovery process that goes on with nature and the earth. You know, us humans on top of the earth trying to put everything back together, uh, it's a little bit unpleasant for us. But, you know, fresh water, rainfall, if it's not too excessive, believe it or not, it certainly has a role. And we see that in the rebuilding process of the ecosystem down there, the forest, et cetera. We don't need that. Think about the massive devastation to the forest system in this area right through here. We don't need it drying out, okay? And so rain will be a good thing as long as it's not excessive and prolonged and doesn't come with tornadoes and hail and stuff like that unfortunately we don't get to choose our weather but i'm just trying to paint a little bit of a rosy picture here it's not all bad news yes the rainfall and the thunderstorms can be problematic but in this area i'm telling you you don't want it drying out and becoming a tender box it's going to be a few years of wishing for that i can guarantee you and that's going to be something to monitor over time. It really will, especially, you know, if we get into a La Nina event where it's dry or we see drought conditions come in. We're going to have a lot to monitor over the next several years relating to the recovery of Hurricane Matthew. Now, all of this will be moving steadily to the east. Individual cells will probably come up and move southwest to northeast. 
Some of them will develop off the Atlantic into the Low Country and areas such as Georgetown and into parts of the Myrtle Beach area and maybe eventually Wilmington, but I think that's going to be more tomorrow. And that leads me to this from Alan Huffman. He is in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. I really like following him. Uh, and a lot of Tar Heel folks. And by that, I just mean North Carolina, the state, has nothing to do with sports or, you know, whatever. It's just an expression. Uh, Alan and Eric Webb, uh, and there's others. I can't think of them offhand, but, uh, you know, they went to NC State or UNC Charlotte. And, um, uh, in fact, down in uh, Charleston, Sonia Stevens, uh, if you watch her on WCIV, uh, she went to NC State, I think. I think that's right. Anyhow, uh, Alan was talking about the fact that, yeah, tomorrow we do have to keep an eye on severe weather for parts of uh eastern North Carolina perhaps, maybe up into the Triangle, which is Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill. And it's interesting that he mentions, and you know, this is where history can be a guide just to kind of wake people up. Maybe I need to pay more attention when you say something like this. That is also a good time to remind you that the strongest tornado in Raleigh history, an F4 tornado, occurred at night in November. All right, not in the springtime, not in April. There was a big outbreak in 1984 in eastern North Carolina. That was more towards Greenville and nearer the coastal plain, but all up and down the I-95 corridor and then probably 75 miles either side. Tomorrow in the Carolinas, you need to pay attention. All right, that's the bottom line. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. Not much happening in the Atlantic. That's good. I think we're going to wind things down. We will keep an eye on what's going on in the Pacific, and maybe there will be a November hurricane that develops, and we'll get down to the X storm. Very, 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 I don't know if that's ever happened. I'll have to go and look. This is beyond, I can't remember that we've ever been to the X storm uh, in the eastern Pacific. Uh, maybe you know yourselves. Put it in the comments on YouTube, please. All right, well, that's about it. Um, I will be doing these updates daily while we have threats in the tropics so to speak and once that diminishes these will just become more you know twice a week and then of course once we get to December 1st and beyond with the exception of when there is a big ticket winter storm event or something like that these will go to every Monday roughly and, you know make sure we do it once a week that's the bottom line so uh, we have sort of an extended period coming up as we monitor what's happening in the Pacific I'll be around every day until it all goes away, and then we'll go to weekly and enjoy some time off. Have a great rest of your Thursday. I appreciate you tuning in. Hope you had a good Halloween last night and you don't have too much of a tummy ache from eating all of your children's candy. you got to be careful with that. I am Mark Set of HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow. <laughs>